Hey guys, so I'm currently in the conservatory where I volunteer every week and I wanted to show you a few things. Uh, I have made in the past many videos about watering of succulents and I'm sure online on YouTube you can find many uh, videos about it. I wanted to share with you there is this great channel on Instagram, Cat Sucks. Uh, I would highly recommend you to follow her because she has the most beautiful succulents I have seen. And she posted, I think, a week ago in Australia, which they have the opposite from us. They have summer right now and it's middle of the winter here. And she was saying that she's watering almost daily uh, her chrysulas. As you know, chrysulas are dormant during the summertime. Uh, but it gets so dry and hot there that she waters almost daily. And she showed Buddha's temple, Merchandi, all these rare, fussy <laughs> Chrysulas and they were doing amazing. So I have learned this early on when I started dealing with succulents. These general guidelines you get, um, they're not going to be helpful. And I know that you won't like that answer if you're a beginner and started collecting succulents. But it, it's really important to figure out what's in your environment. You know, temperatures that you have, humidity levels, what's the soil you are using. So last week in the Desert Dome, we had during the night freezing temperatures. And I, I don't know if you can see these window seals, they're all wet right now because right now temperature is above freezing. And we have holes all around this glass of the dome. So the water runs all through this window seal and I try to elevate the pots by putting these stones um, two years ago but still there was so much water that it was frozen and uh, some of the pots were completely stuck and frozen if they didn't have like the plate like this uh, they would be frozen on the bottom uh, so what did I do <laughs> during the month of January here in the desert dome absolutely nothing <laughs> I don't water at all because I'm just letting them uh, you know survive this uh, at home same type of plants like there is some of the uh, Greptovarius some of the Echeverius here uh, that are doing beautiful I would at home uh, when they're under lights have to water them but here you can see how they actually opened up even and became a bigger than under lights. Um, they actually like cool, cooler temperatures. It brings some colors out of them and uh, kills the pests. I'm gonna show you a little bit around and definitely there is no mealybugs. But let me quickly show you some of the echeverias here that I brought in a pretty bad shape and how well they did here. So one of them is this Da Vinci Code. Echeveria that really shrinked under lights and it just wasn't doing good and I brought it here and as you can see it's really like opened up got some color and right now it's bottom of the pot is so cold you know because there's that cold water and ice um, no water for weeks nobody's gonna get the drop this one also, that is such a beautiful variegated echeveria, I thought I'm going to have to throw away. Um, fungus and pests attacked it in the past, brought it here end of summer, beginning of, uh, or end of fall, beginning of winter, and look at all the new growth that happened when, it's, when we started getting cooler temperatures. Very happy about the recovery. These don't look the best, but there is some more here. Uh, that I brought. This is the uh, Atoll. The Chiveria really opened up. These are some of my propagations of uh, Prolifica. As you can see, they're not as pink as mine that are under lights, but this one I donated to conservatory because they didn't have Prolifica. Um, here are our mimicry plants here in the conservatory, guys. And really, unlike what you read online, and they're so firm, we have, and it's preparing to bloom, I think. Uh, we have watered these guys. This one is preparing to bloom as well. Pretty regularly. Both of these pots, all through the, you know, fall. We stopped when it got really, really cold. Um, yeah, and they're doing really good. Here is guy. 
guys another beautiful looking echeveria uh, diffractance uh, it's a shedding echeveria it has really really pretty blooms um, this area here doesn't really have much heat so there is few heaters here guys these gas heaters and when we had that terrible freeze if you watch my videos about two years ago they never really fixed those so not all of them work around the desert dome and those that work they don't work really really well so we still get the freezing on some of the window seals we were just lucky this winter we didn't have super low temperatures but uh, yeah otherwise we would be at the risk of losing some of these plants but uh, I did notice that with the Cheverias they can tolerate uh, some of the really low temperatures around the freezing and not die as long as they're not watered overwhelmed by dealing with the water so this is one that I brought here that recovered it was almost ready for trash um, this was one of the purchases from clearance at various that I got for conservatory for I think just two dollars or a dollar and it looks amazing and here is Maurice hi Maurice Did you miss me? Yeah. All right. Okay, guys, I wanted to show you quickly just a few more plants. There was quite a bit of ice here uh, that melted, but this was a terraria that I donated, Pearl Wannenberg, and it was really attacked by mealybugs during the summer. When I brought it, this wasn't as bad, but then summer came, maybe we had a terrible infestation. Look at how clean it is now when it's freezing temperatures. Mealy bugs don't like freezing temperatures, nor this higher humidity. Um, so they're looking really good. And there is some other ones here like this Magnifica. It does look pale, but I think it's completely recovered. That's the plant that I brought here. Um, here is Morris attempting to climb here. He, He's gonna, I'm so afraid he's gonna knock over some of these plants that I moved from the windowsill. <laughs> oh my goodness. There's some more of Echeverias. Here are my propagations. I can't remember if this is Superbum, Pentandrum. Oh, he's licking water. Are you thirsty, Morris? I think I can check your water bowl. Uh oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna move you right now. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so these I had to move because they were all starting to freeze from the bottom. And, um, yeah, just to keep them from rot. Wow, this one really got stressed out. This is the one that I brought here don't like how it looks right now I don't know if it's getting really strange colors here like it's getting thick it looks pretty but I don't know what's going on with it the leaves are a little soft but it's a dry soil maybe it was just too cold for it I don't know I don't know if I should take this one home to keep an eye on it. Looks really nice, doesn't it, guys? I was hoping to behead this one and produce babies. I think I'm gonna still try to leave it here. So guys, I'm here in my plant room back home and as you can see, I have here plants that are under lights. I have LED lights and they run about nine hours a day. Uh, these plants get much drier uh, than the plants uh, that are in the conservatory or the plants that are on my window seal. Uh, current humidity in this room is about 35% and temperature is about 23 Celsius. It drops during the night to 19 Celsius, which is about 70 Fahrenheit. It's much drier, much warmer, and the soil uh, gets drier faster. 
Uh, so uh, my uh, watering is adjusted accordingly. So how do I summarize all these tips for you if you're a beginner? So with, this is what I would recommend you. Get terracotta pots. Terracotta pots are, uh, will help you with the risk of root rot because they allow plants and soil to get drier faster. So here is example. This pot here, this is a chrysula and it's among Jan January. I watered it just four days ago. So four days ago watered and I gave it a good amount of water and it's under lights and it's really dry guys. You can see actually on the edges they're a little bit separated from the pot. Separation of soil from the from the pot is a good indicator your soil is uh, ready to be watered. If you uh, place your finger in, you see how it's like a very uh, dry and easily separated soil and doesn't stick to your finger, that's a good indicator that uh, is ready for watering. Uh, I will still not water it until it's one week because all of these plants I water once every week. The other tip that I would share, so if you absolutely cannot uh, get uh, terracotta pots or it's just not convenient because they're heavy you can work with plastic pots you will just have to maybe give a little bit less water every time you're watering or maybe a uh, water a little bit less often the other factor that you could control when you're watering would be choice of soil i would really not recommend you using miracle grow uh, succulent and soil mix in the past a lot of my plants struggled uh, with the soil mix and when it gets dry uh, it will like uh, completely uh, shrink and it become like it, like a, you put the glue in the soil and when you water the soil will just run through. Now this is not good because succulents still like to have a drink and it, they're not going to be getting enough water. So if you're not going to be able to take time and soak these plants well with the miracle Grow soil mix then make sure to use something else. I use cocoa brick, which buys, by the way, will save you money because you get so much soil from when you buy that cocoa brick for like 10 to $15. And I mix it one third of that, one third of perlite and one third of espoma cactus and soil mix. If you're still using miracle Grow cactus and succulent soil mix, it's okay. Uh, I have used it at some point. Again, I would then recommend make sure you soak your plants when it's time to water so that that soil and it's not completely dried up and uh, the water just runs through. So the other thing you need to control and check is the temperature and uh, humidity in your uh, environment. So if you have plants like I do by on a window seal by the windows during the winter time, it's always cooler by the windows than under lights. I water those less in the amounts than what I would water them during the summertime or if I move them sometimes under lights because sometimes I move some plants from window seal under lights to get a little bit more light for a period of time. So these plants that are under lights, I water the most because they do get dry the most and you can see it on them. Uh, the ones on the, on the window seal a little bit less. So. Uh, also get this cheap uh, little tool that allows you to measure temperature and humidity because the lower humidity and the higher temperature the more chance your your plant is thirsty also if your plant doesn't have much light then most likely you don't need to water it as often or otherwise you will have etiolation because the plant will grow but there is no enough light so then you're going to have that um, ugly spacing between the leaves so um so here is example actually this chrysula was uh in the window sale until just like a week ago and though it didn't get sick uh, nothing happened to it it's still it actually bloomed a lot of the tips uh like this one here you see this this distance here with the pre between the previous set of leaves and this set of leaves that is too much they they need to be more compact so this is because in the window seal under angle that it was in, some of the sides didn't get enough light. Uh, I didn't water this one very much, actually. I was skipping watering, so it was like twice a month because I knew on the window seal is not getting enough light, but it still stretched a little bit because it's growing season. They're still growing uh, part of the winter time. Anyway, hope these tips have been helpful to you and don't get discouraged if you have lost some plants and if this feels like it's so hard, you will figure it out. You get better and better 
recognizing what they need. So uh, keep doing what you're doing and keep learning and um, see you soon in the next video.